lot of things run through your mind. Scholar, brother, an African man. This topic today, Africa, mother of Western civilization. I'd like to bring on Dr. Yosef Ben Johannes. Africa, 
origins of Western civilization is almost anticlimactic as the, at this uh, period of time. It seems as if I've been speaking about that since 1939, as a few days ago. And, but it doesn't change since 1939. It seems that, as if we know less as we hear more. And why do we know less up to now? I think it's because of our blind faith. We have an undying blind faith about Europeans. And that is, we cannot get away from them. We cannot get away from them because our point of reference is nothing but European. First of all, what they have done to us, number one, even when people refer to us, they have to, we have to remember Europe. When you call us, when we go to our birth certificate, and when we read the birth certificate, when we look at what our mother and our father, and we read their name, when we decide to go to pay a pilgrimage to our deity, we see Europe. When we go to the classroom and we study in, in history, let's say, we read and can remember nothing else but European or European-American history. Uh, for those of us who know a little bit of history, it is King George, Louis V, and all kinds of Georges and Louis. <laughs> and so, naturally, uh, everything we see is from a European setting. And then we are mad with Michael Jackson because he changed his nose. And he changed, I don't see nothing wrong with Michael Jackson. I'm surprised that most of you haven't changed your nose or your face. Uh, <laughs> Professor Simon and myself were coming from Brooklyn yesterday. And we were looking at all the things coming from Brooklyn all over the bridge. And we were trying to find some of the things that we could point, it, point out owned by black folks. And said, and Jesse's going to be the president of all these buildings and all these bridges. And, said, and the white man going to vote for him to be the president of all of these things. <laughs> then I look, I, look, I look at the military brace in Brooklyn, the, what's left of it. And the Coast Guard building just down there. And, they did all the Navy boats that in the harbor, and that comes in at those outside of the harbor. Only, only those that we could see. And then we look at all the, the refineries, oil refineries uh, that we could see on the Brooklyn side and everything. I said, that's what Jeffrey Jackson will be president of. <laughs> and I said, you know, we sick. We got to be naturally sick to believe that the cracker will put us in charge <laughs> of all of that <laughs> equally. And we're going to share this. <laughs> I said, you have something wrong with us. <laughs> but we have to go back a little deeper than that. If you believe that, you are not only a danger to yourself, you're a danger to me. <laughs> because if you believe that, then you've got to believe you're going to protect it from me. <laughs> you've got to believe that you're going to go to any African country to kill those people. Because since you're not African, I'm talking about African. I know when the boat came from Africa, it brought Jamaicans. It brought Georgians, it brought uh, Puerto Rican and Cubans uh, from Africa. Uh, at the, and that day I was looking to find what country, I look at the country, I look for Jamaica in Africa, uh, uh, West Virginia, uh, Southern New York in Africa, because that's where you are. So I said to myself, George, something is wrong with me. I guess it's old age when you get old. You do. I know your bones get slow. I can tell. Nobody can tell me. But your brain obviously got slow. So something must be wrong with me 
Well, this is all the preliminary thing. I got to tune up before I get deep into this thing to understand what's going on. So I thought that it's because I'm getting old, why I have missed something. So then I, I have to look back and ask. The other day, I was, uh, somebody came to me and said, you're always talking. I got to talk about this now. There's a black man in charge of West Point. I said, you're right. There's a black man, he's the director of West Point. So then I asked him, what is the administration of West Point? Who is, is his secretary? Who is his licensed man? Show me the cabinet which he is over. And I found there's one other black man and there are 15 fellows who run the West Point. I said, you know what happened? They could put a jackass there. I mean, one with the four legs and then long, two long ears. And it would make no difference at West Point, much less if they put a black man there. <laughs> now, you know the black man they put there. He'd be no different than Chappie James, but he's dead, he, he's all right now. And he go, he wouldn't be no different than Brigadier uh, General uh, uh, Davis Jr. It wouldn't be, he said, I am of your color and every race, but I'm not of your kind. <laughs> now, uh, ain't no be no different than Leo Jean Price, the singer, and her brother, the, the general, and well, who said they will go to South Africa to fight the African communists like they will fight any communists. Uh, I mean, so what difference does it make who is in charge of West Point? West Point is no different than when they put Otana and put him in, 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 in jail and kick him out of West Point, frame him up. It's the same West Point this man is in charge of. It is no different than who is the senator, well, Brooks is gone, poor fellow, because he thought that Adam Powell would have to be kicked, and as a matter of fact, he sat there and persecuted Adam Powell for the other crackers, while he himself had his cracker broad wife, wife in, in Boston. You see, so now I look at history again unfolding. Not only did the brothers in, in Brooklyn and sisters, there are some that down there. They made sure that Van der Beatty go to jail. You remember him. But he's been to jail so long you can't remember him. Well, Van der Beatty has a black wife who loved him and some black children. So they put him to jail. That's uh, our van and the whole bunch of them down there. They put Van der Beatty to jail. So I said, ah, oh, good. They got a good brother coming up or a good sister who don't do a lot for us. So when I look, they got a brother. Well, I, I, they got a fellow who looked like a black man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, name is Owens. So I know that he gonna bring a black wife. No. <laughs> so I'm sitting there to see the black family that's gonna replace Van the Beatty family and found that Major Owens wife but somebody said, she only look white, but she ain't white. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I started to do my historic research about his wife. And she still keep coming up white, white up to today. <laughs> now, some one of you may have a different situation. Now I am hearing that it wasn't that. So what happened? History again. A black sister, an African sister, with her African husband, came to Egypt, the same Egypt that uh, 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 Gil was showing the other night, Adelaide was there, Stanford, and she spoke there, she came back and spoke that, and said that when she became chancellor of the education system, that every black child, as a part of the elementary education, the city should make sure that that child at least go to Africa one time before it graduates from public school. Because she's saying, it isn't that child's fault that it doesn't know its homeland. All Europeans know their homeland from one way or the other, but the black child should have to be able to go to Africa from young, so that it would appreciate the continent. But I am hearing that she's now going to have competition from another colored fellow. This one was a 
deputy superintendent, he also has a white wife. That's Giffords. So you have to learn from the of history because every time I look at you, as soon as you get two cents, whether you're in the rap rope or, or you hit the numbers or you play baseball or football and run over the fence with hearts uh, placed there with a, with a briefcase in your hand or you, you could throw a, 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 a basketball and you're taller than seven feet or so and lose out your mind and growing. Whether you do it that way, you still you don't understand African history because the way you live proves that you do not understand. So let me give you a little lesson in African history and its impact at, on European history, if in fact Europe had a history to impact on. <laughs> well, let us see if Europe had a history. First of all, we got to see when can we start European history. When can we start Asian history? When can we start the two continents of the Americas history? And when can we start now Australia suddenly stop being the biggest, largest island is became a continent? Uh, anytime European wants something to be something, it'll be that way. <laughs> and Australia has suddenly become a continent. And Antarctica is a continent. So we put, then we will find what, what, uh, when did African history uh, come into being. Well, since we are not going to talk about Antarctica because not, nobody from Antarctica is around to defend it. So we're going to let that one go for the time being. And Australia, we're not going to talk about that because the owners of that continent are still being hunted as if you hunt a rabbit. That's the carrion which you would call aborigines like your masters call them. The people call themselves carrion, but you call them aborigines. That's not you call yourself niggers. So there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> if you, you call yourself niggers, you'll call them anything else. <laughs> now, so we, we, we could deal with Australia because those who really run Australia now, most of them, mamas and great grandmamas and daddies, came from the jails of Ireland and England. That was used as a penal colony for some of the worst criminals that ever came out of England. Australia. It was like the state of Georgia. The state of Georgia was used as a criminal reserve for the English government. So when the cracker and Georgia talk about Atlanta, and you tell me how great Atlanta is, as if it could be better than any other cracker place, then I want to know if you remember that the people in Atlanta now, the crackers, are no better than their mamas were. And the great mamma grandmama was there. was second was then and the second was now. <laughs> now. <laughs> so then we could eliminate that. Now when we come to Asia, because a lot of you got problems. If you become Muslim, here it goes. If you become a Muslim, you automatically leave your arm. I don't know why. It must be that you can't look in the mirror. I don't, I, for, for Christmas, I'm going to get you a mirror. <laughs> At least an imaginary mirror to make you realize being Muslim don't make you simultaneously an Arab. You got problems. And let me tell you, by the way, for those of us tonight, I'm bound to get some Muslim questions. <laughs> so I'm going to make myself a Muslim right now. And anybody who wants to be a Muslim with me, this is the way. Believe it or not, this is all you better say. A shadow, huh? Um, let Allah, Muhammad Rasul Allah, that make you a Muslim. You need nothing else. You don't need to know the Quran. You don't need to know nothing about Muhammad. You don't need to know about Muhammad's mama, nor his grandmother or papa. You don't need to know anything. Just that statement makes you a Muslim. And there ain't nobody to tell you all the things. Killing the damn language. Doing everything. You know, that's all he knows. But he doesn't do that. 
So when you're going to talk about uh, uh, ancient Greece, you have to speak of these people from the islands who went in there. But the people of those islands who occupied that island, even before it became Paris, were people who were colonials of Egypt. The earliest people that became subsequently Greeks were themselves under the colony of, of, of Egypt. Thus it is that the earliest education of the people who went over there and established any kind of civilization or high culture were colonials under the Egyptian quote-unquote educational system which later Western Europeans call mysteries system. And that's what the word mysteries mean. Don't put any magic to it about mystery system because all it, well, all, but let me give you one of the mysteries taught in the educational system. Mathematics, law, engineering. These are mysteries. Why are they mysteries? If you don't know them, they are mysterious. <laughs> See, for men who can't read and write, writing is a mystery. Anything you don't know and comprehend is a mystery. Childbirth, for many of you mothers, is a mystery. You had a baby, but you don't know even how you got pregnant. You can't trace, you can't trace the reproductive organ. You can't trace yours, how are you going to trace his? But you knew you were pregnant. Do you know what I mean? You know you had a baby, but isn't it a pity that here's a mother, that you fathers don't have no idea that because you've you been going around all the place talking, but you made a baby. <laughs> you have never made a baby. You had a, a bunch of lazy sperm going doing nothing. <laughs> and you, you had a hard end, and the next thing from a hard end with friction, you, you're going to ejaculate. And, and the sperm's got there the woman. And you're so damn stupid, you don't know that you didn't pass a baby. You passed the sperm. The baby is made in the mother. Babies are not made in man and go to woman. So sisters, when you tell you, I pass a baby, tell it, you know he's a jackass. Don't care how long you were married, how long you were married to him, you know you got a fool. <laughs> so, so now you know, you got to get it straight. We're going to get on the road. Now, understanding all of this now, this society called Greece was just like the brother I was just talking about. The Europeans who boast of the Greeks, who boast of Europe, uh, Greek civilization in terms of the first historian, meaning Herodotus. When, how, you, you got to deal with the first historian. Herodotus is not known any way, any place in history until at best 457. Then is when we are hear about Herodotus from men like Eusebius and other co uh, uh, chronologists. So that's 457 before the common era, you said BC. The next uh, persons are supposed to be a superstar in Greek, and why Greek? Greek represent the Western world. The next superstar for Greece will be Thales, T-H-A-L-E-S. He is supposed to have been the first philosopher in the world. And we don't hear from Thales, Thales, uh, uh, and Thales until six, about 623 B.C. The next superstar is supposed to be Homer, because it's Homer who was the first Greek, the first European, to have written anything that we have any record of, when he wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And that was about 830, 833, somewhere around. Most of the Greek things are 33, and in 33. Uh, Hippocrates eight, uh, was born, uh, three uh, 333. And, and all these kind of fellows, 33, 33, just the kind of magical numbers. And the next superstar to his is the father of medicine, <laughs> Hippocrates. He's 333. Now, you could get some more fathers and grandfathers. Of course, they had no mothers in their history. <laughs> because Greeks, they used to go with women very, very rarely. <laughs> very rarely. When they come back from the army, they might remember they got a wife. <laughs> You see, Greeks used to bet each other whose wife was a virgin, whose wife was still had a hymen. By the way, I got to use that because a virgin is mixed up with a hymen. You see, a woman could be a virgin 
and still had progenitors. The Greek word Virgo, and that's where virgin comes from, has nothing to do with hymen. A woman condition of hymen is a woman who has had no sexual intercourse or placed any foreign substance in her vagina, vagina to rupture a thin membrane of skin with very sensitive nerve covering the hole there, and that's the hymen. The rupture of that stops you from being a virgin, and it don't have to be a penis. Anything that will dilate it, that will burst it, is the destruction. So if you've been fingering yourself masturbating and, and you bust it, and then you never had a man, you still don't have a hymen. <laughs> so I've got to make this clear. So Virgo is not a state. Now, if you got that, don't care all you are, you have a hymen. It does, you, you still see the Virgo. Virgo is a state of being, a state of condition, not physical. It was a frame of mind a person could be, okay? So when they said that goddess accept, had an immaculate conception and gave a virgin birth 4,100 years before Mary turned around and did the same trick. <laughs> it, it, they were talking about a condition, a state of mind, and not a physical condition of asset. Now, since we understand these things, I just lay the foundation for us to understand what we are talking about the African origins of. As we look at uh, the earliest, the Europeans, at best, not one of these records of Europe show any historical document before 833 Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. So we could say Greece and Rome did not enter history until 833. We were told by the Europeans themselves in their colleges and elsewhere that until a nation writes, until you have in your society writing, you are not in history. Writing separates free history from history. The day a uh, uh, high culture writes down its event, it doesn't mean that's not doing anything. But until it records it, it said that is prehistory. Anything from the day it records its first word until now is called history. Now, since that is so, let us look at what African countries recorded their history and when. We have Ethiopian history that go back to King Ori about 5,100 before the common era. <coughs> we have Egyptian history with recorded, recorded history and we're going to take the archaeological finds, uh, much of the recorded and the hieroglyphs which we cannot read, mm -hmm. most of these ancient ones, they, you, if, if we're dealing with those that we can decipher, we will go back to at, at least at least 6,000 to 10,000 before the common era because we would have to go back to the time of the Egyptian calendars, the first calendar of 10,000 BC being the, uh, uh, the stellar calendar. And then we will come down to 4100 BC which would be the solar calendar. The current calendar, solar, the current calendar of the European from Rome is based upon the Egyptian calendar. I, I, I got to be the comfort of my day. Get comfortable. See, I'm, I'm just yeah. walking up my sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Now, All right. uh, excuse me for those of you who feel that uh, uh, a professor should be more uh, appropriately dressed. <laughs> now, you got problem, not me. <laughs> I'm not a European. Okay. Leave me alone, I take off everything, but some of, you, some of you get embarrassed for seeing what you're accustomed to. Yes, thank you. Now, what we have to then see, that what I'm showing you is that the African recording of events started, we, for us to go back to the beginning of it, we can only go to archaeology because it's way beyond our comprehension of what the symbols are. We see them, but we can't decode them as yet 
some of them dating back to as much as 500 to 1000 BC. When we go to the drawings and the writings at the Ticini Mountain, in what is called the Atlas Mountains and the Ticini Mountains in Northern Africa in the Sahara. If we go to the southern part of Egypt, about of Africa, a place then called Monomotapa, before the first European come there, in a place called Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, in the, the modern country is named for it. It used to be the capital of the city of Monom uh, the, the nation of Monomotapa, which was bigger than the United States. Now they have a stupid picture called some chat or something that's supposed to deal with one of the heads of that state. We're, we're, we're starting to even see to remember what it's called. Now, I know you saw it. You couldn't miss it. It's on TV and it's in the newspaper, especially daily news, your, your Bible. And uh, you're, looking, you're looking to find what Ching Chow must do for the day. And while looking there, you may get tired because they not less so you read about that. It has left the highest stage of your intellectual capacity. Now, so, when we, we go back to that, so we're seeing now, we're dealing when the African is in this high value of high culture, of the highest value of civilization, you said, reading and writing. They can read and notate the civilization, what has transpired prior to our being. That is what makes writing and reading so important, that it tells us what happened prior to our being, the importance of your birth certificate. That's uh, the thing. It documents for you what you could remember because although you were born, you weren't to that stage conscious that now it's transpired up to now, so you must go back to the document. That's the, the, the quality of recording. And that is what we must go back to. So when we go back to writing, and as I was dealing with the calendar, you will find that even the calendar that tells us to come here this particular day by reading that document, the one that is now is 365 days per year. And they, they, they are, within this year, 12 months. These 12 months are broken up to, into an, an equal amount of days per month. So that's 28 days in one case make one month, and another 48, 29 will make it. Some are 30 days and some are 31 days. The Africans have developed a calendar which is still being used in Ethiopia as its national calendar, still being used in Egypt by the Coptics and all the farmers as their calendar with 365 and a quarter days. And in the months there are 11, there are 12 months of 30 days each and one month of five days. So that you can't make mistake of being confused what some people got no birthday for, 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 for four years. Other, you know, other people got birthday in that, during that time, but you just had four years because you didn't say nothing and all that kind of junk. You see, now, uh, that, uh, so you, you understand right there. But the Romans, the intelligence at the early stage couldn't deal with this. So they had to have an African come from Ethiopia to change the calendar so those jackasses could understand to deal with dates. They tried to develop a number system. It was so cumbersome. Roman numbers, L, L, X, 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 Y, Y, I, 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 I equals 50 million years. <laughs> now, how the hell you going to multiply with that? <laughs> you see? So they had to get somebody to come to change that for them. So, now, and they had to take an African, because at the time we had not civilized the bastards out of the, of, of, of the cage yet. Now, excuse the language, you know, but you're not supposed to speak like that when you go to the school. This is nice finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> See, some of us forget that we are African. You say, I am like Jesus, I speak the language of the people. <laughs> you see, Jesus went from saying, you motherfuckers, and all the time. <laughs> it's the language of the people. Why do you think that Jesus didn't say that? You would have thought that Jesus did not speak Hebrew. He spoke Aramaic, the language of the people. Then what did I hear you saying all the time? Do I hear you say, nigga motherfucker? <laughs> so I could just say Jesus when he's on earth, say, nigga motherfucker, all the time, all the time. So I'm speaking a little bit better than Jesus, at least. I haven't called you a motherfucker yet. <laughs> so, now. And we look there and look so close to 
to this thing. We are involved. We have set up. I'm, I'm in Egypt now. I am a, I'm a Saqqara. That's the film you just saw. I am a Saqqara. And the reason I go to Saqqara, it used to be my cemetery. Remember, I am, I'm going to Saqqara in 4100 BC. 4100 BC. You know what happened? Adam and Eve isn't yet in work. And I am a Saqqara. <laughs> setting up an institute of learning. And Adam and Eve didn't come yet. They can't come. They don't do yet to write no Bible. <laughs> Abraham isn't born yet. He isn't going to come until I am in my 13th dynasty. It's come to 1675 before I'm not here for this turkey. He's going to show up in 1675. I'm already in my 13th dynasty. He comes in with a conqueror. Coming in with a conqueror who conquered me. A, a, a set of people that I saved from hunger. Saved in the drawers to wear. And I tell them they could come in, they come into my house to dinner and try to rape my wife. <laughs> These are the people. I mean, Abraham is going to be born that time. So take up your Bible, your Quran, and anything. And when you hear the name Abraham, that sucker was no damn good. <laughs> he came in with the hikers who came to conquer my people after we had fed them, clothed them, and did everything. We are still taking in people. Still treating people. The last time the Iranians was here, we won't forget that that same Iranian was the Persians who had come and set fire to our behind. I teach you with all the beautiful language that we use in the university. You don't, you don't hear nothing then. So but I, I speak in the language of the people. Maybe you remember because I spoke to you in the languages. I will call you all kind of names soon. Now, <laughs> now what? You, the, 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 so we're looking down. I set up the school in Saqqara. Why did I set up the school in Saqqara? Because the Nile suddenly, nature, suddenly decided to change its course. And I, I, was, I had my everything at a city called Menefa, which the Greeks later come and changed the name to Memphis. So Memnefa is just uh, down the hill, Saqqara. Uh, so when the Nile changed with the flood, I moved my city in my cemetery. If you go to modern Egypt, in old Egypt, a place called Fustat, you will see a whole city where the people live in the cemetery. That's why I know dead people don't do a damn thing but stay dead. <laughs> see, all of you that scare ghosts and tell, but uh, uh, the person come back and say that dead people don't do shit. Dead people stay dead. That's why they're dead. <laughs> they won't shit no more. Only a memory. And if the bastard was no good alive, let him stay dead. Don't even remember it. Now, <laughs> we moved our city from the lower land and went up to the highland with the cemeteries. But up there, not only did we build in wood, but then at a time it became important because wood was perishing in the kind of weather we had. So one of our great multi genus among us, uh, we had many multi genus, but one, the only one that we, the earliest one that we called a man called Imhotep, decided he has a method to build with the best method. And we said, hey, well, tell us. He said, we're going to use stone. And so where the hell are you going to get the stone? And in what I said, there's the mountain there with all that big stone. And we said to me, you know, what are you talking about, you ill? <laughs> and he said, I got the method. We said, man, that stone. And he said, it doesn't mean nothing to me. And he said, let me show you. And he started digging and hitting and hammering. Oh, we knew he was going crazy. Black people are all going crazy. <laughs> and so he hit, and then he went and squared up the thing. And we said, now in hotel, watch it. He said, then he brings some wood. I said, you're going to hit the wood in there too? He said, no, no, that's that thing. And so he soaked the wood and drove the wood. He took the wood, drove it, and then soaked, throw pour water. Right. And then the wood started to expand and crack the joint. And boom, the block burst and separate. And we just pull it out the wall. And he said, we're going to take one plus one of those. And we said, what's going to hold it in the wall, man? 
<laughs> you need plaster, like them jackass come in <laughs> and mortar. You're gonna need it like them sodden Jews. You, you're gonna show it to the Greek and the jackass gonna try to put some mortar. They ain't do it yet, but we, I could see in the future. I'm a prophet. <laughs> and he says, no, 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 you got, we're gonna grind it down. And we're gonna make the damn joint so, so they can't stick a piece of notebook paper in between the joint. What? You gonna do that? We could do that. He said, Yeah, we do, mother. <laughs> so Inhotep got there and built our first building, the first building in the world out of stone. And you saw it in the film. And so we said, You know that man, you gonna stay? We can't let you stay in the building buildings. You're already an architect. Yes, but but you're the, you're, we can't take you away. You're a doctor. No, we, we're talking, uh, I, I was talking to the hotel, of my mind, and I was talking to him, and this is around 2780, 80, 2780, before the common era. Adam and Eve isn't here yet. <coughs> and so I said, you, gotta, you still got your duties as prime minister. You still writing songs, make me, uh, to talk about eat, drink, and be merry, but tomorrow we're going to die. You're still writing poetry. You know, except you don't have time for this, for all this, to be doing that. And then you go build the thing too. What you gonna do? Now I'm talking to one of our star builders. This is a genius. He does everything that you could think of. And yet, Michelangelo isn't coming till 2,000 years later to be the first most genius. And here I'm talking to one 2,000 years before. Um, Etrusca, Rome isn't yet. Rome gonna come at two, about a thousand odd years later. You understand? Now let us go because I I decided to 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 move from there. No, I decided I go further in to one of the tombs. He says, where you going? I said, let's go. That's a little pyramid over there. I said, since you build it, you go build a step pyramid with with, with seven different mastabas. Mastaba is a box shaped looking thing, and one on top of the other, you build that, that pyramid to put uh, Pharaoh Juza. Uh, I said, well, let's go to, to the one to hold us. It, it drives me. It's got some, something about that uh, pyramid is driving me mad. So he said, that's a carrying. It's, a small, it's the smallest one we got. But I said, but something tell me is important. So when in there, I found that the best preserved writing, the pyramid text and the coffin text, the best writing that has been done in such thing is still in there almost intact like the day. Our brothers, the scribes, had done it. Talking about the concept of the, ne the next world, the concept about heaven, the concept about hell. That hell is not what you're talking about, by the way. Uh, that, that isn't the hell they're talking about. The Christians and Jews and Muslims screw it up since it, they talk about it and the plagiarization of it. And I, I went in there and said, man, you got all these beautiful things. When, when Greece and Rome come in this world, they're going to say, they did this too, you know. I said, just like many good men say, that he's the father of spring. They're going to say, they're the father of this. I go on, I, I said, I go on now. And I said, well, all right, let us go on there. I want to build a house up the street. And you talk about uh, triangulation. I said, he said, what we got to do with we go, we're going to have to do uh, not only triangulation, but we have to do some geometry. I said, what geometry? The Greeks ain't come yet. We ain't going to know what geometry till they come. <laughs> he said, no, 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 what's the Greeks? Well, what are they? I said, they're people who come into the future. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, no, 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 no. If we have to use that to, in order to do the calendar. I said, the calendar is because of, yes, he said, we have to find distance from the different planets and the stars and the moons that's going around there. I said, you could measure from here to there? He said, yes. That's why we developed 3.14. I said, you develop pi? Did you call it pi? The fellows in the fraternities and the women them in the uh, sororities, the Abalapa, Kapadapa, and Bapalapa, they were the ones that started. All the Greek freaks and running around in Harlem and you mean they did started? So he said, no, no, you be hanging on so funny people. I said, I got that way at corner. <laughs>
So then I decided to think. I said, my Pythagoras didn't start the uh, spherical geometry. He said, who is Pythagoras? Oh, I said, he's coming another 2,000 years to school. He's going to come to our school 2,000 years from now. He's going to come. And you see, because I was the one, the prophet was prophesizing, you know, what's going to happen in the future. So he said, no, I don't know what the hell the Pythagoras is. We don't got nobody by that name, Pythagoras. And so I said, yes, he's a Greek fellow. So since he said, I'm speaking to the, I'm speaking to the great, one of our great men, uh, one of the same kind of men that later Alexander is going to come to see. I'm speaking to the Oracle of Anand. And the Oracle is telling me all these things that how we did it. I see it's going on. I saw it going on. But the Oracle said, oh, this, you see, in order for us to tell a circle, you see, a circle in a straight line or the chord, the, the, the arc, I have to know uh, spherical geometry to know the different turn from, how can I get from here to here on the arc, on the chord? He says, is that so? I said, you can't use triangulation for that. He says, yes, I could use triangulation for the line work, but what happened about the curvature? I said, uh, oh, oh, that's what Pythagoras was going to go to Greece and become the father of? He says, yes, yeah, soon, one of these days. <laughs> so I just went down there and asked the brother, this the oracle, and I'm speaking. I said, oracle, tell me something about medicine. It, it, it's because there's somebody who is coming to invent it. He said, I don't know this name to use it. Boy, you don't know any African name at all. Every time I hear you, you got some us and pass and is and, and, and Nignatius and Hasgestas and all kind of damn things. Don't you know any African names? I said, sir, forgive me. I've been hanging out with future Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, well, son, we, you know, uh, well, let's deal with you. you. You're a product, uh, your mother had you by the, a method, and she spaced the child. You notice that your mother had you, but you didn't have, she didn't have your sister till 18 and a half years later. It could be that she was facing your, you, the time between you and your sister said, for 18 and a half years. That's all his daddy wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> he said, more than like this is your daddy wasn't able to do much between that time, between the, you and your sister. But let's say that your sister was a good born, every, you had every four years, you had a brother and a sister. Your mother may have been using one of the medical uh, papyrus that we produce, and that is the one for hot chips. So, I said, well, what is that? What is the papyrus? I said, I said, it's a paper, son. I said, we make it there from the old dream. Uh, and I said, but the Greeks going to have that when they come too? He said, yes, everybody will have paper. Even even uh, black folks in, in Queens going to have paper, but they don't know where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't think it comes from Europe. Uh, I, said, I said, oh, on the paper, on the papyrus, you see, we wrote down a medical treaty. It was, uh, it is today called the Ebers Papyrus. Some Greek, some European stole it from Africa and sell it to another one. He put his name, Ebers Papyrus. He said, that is nothing but a papyrus dealing with God, Planned Parenthood. Hatshepsut, Queen Macari Hatshepsut. She used it. Now she used that in 1555 years before Mary and Jesus. It meant that she used that 500 or more years before there's a Greece. She used that plant parent to stop herself up. They had two children. She felt that she couldn't be the queen of Egypt who operated as a king wearing men clothes and even wear a false there. And she didn't want to get pregnant while she had affairs of state. So she used it. I like, I was doing a little thing with you sister because so that your big brothers don't keep you pregnant all the time and you can't afford money for protection. Then you don't get some shrub, it calls for some shrub of acacia, uh, 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 put into honey. And the chemical reaction, it will break down into lactic acid. Lactic acid, when you put it in the, in, in, in the canal, would trap the sperm, murder them. And then none of them could live. Because that's the same thing you're doing today when you buy autogenal jelly. It is not, but it put it in the rubber, in the cup. The, all it does is help to trap the sperm. Any one of those ones don't run around the edge, swim around the edge and go behind it, they catch the sucker coming up around the edge. <laughs> See, that's what, that's what 
the other journeyman came from that, that uh, spermicidal jelly came from the Ebers papyrus. Now, we went back and said, this is it. He said, no, son, we got all kind of medical papers. He said, let us go to what is called a Rockefeller. Rockefeller got a papyrus. He said, that's one of, one of the thieves was Rockefeller. He stole a lot. And he said, we will go there and deal with spinal injuries. We will go there and I'll show you another papyrus of dealing, dealing with um, um, gynecology. Way back there, not only had our ancestors been dealing with it, but they had broke, broken down medicine compartmentally in the sub-disciplines of medicine. And you could go to the Brooklyn Museum and see the Edwin C. Split papyrus, a papyrus dealing with surgical techniques. Just as you could go today at the, 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 the Douglas Temple, a god Osiris, or Osiris, and the god Subek. It is at a place called Kom Umbo. And in the rare part of this temple, you can still see the medical instruments, the scalpel and the scissors and all that there outlined on the wall. You see the Medusa. As you enter every temple in the, in, in the inside and the outside, you see the symbol where the doctors wear. And they told you they didn't know where it come from. But every temple, as you're walking into the door, you're bound to see it. So, you see, I'm talking now. Remember, there's no Greece yet. I am bringing them in the picture all the time. They're going to come 2,000 years in the future. And you're sitting down with me and hearing me ask our sages these questions. And you're going to come to back to this world like I did. You see, we're going to transpose you. And the, you see that thing that we're going back for the got in the movies? They'll go back to the past. Time machine. Huh? Time machine. The time machine. I am bringing you today. I, I, we have brought you back. You sitting down and t listening to our sage. You're not hearing me. The sage is speaking to me, to you. I am translating because you ain't know the language with English. And I did Arabic. A few words, you could say Assalamu Alaikum. So, so, so I got to translate from the hieratic language, from the demotic language, from all those languages to you. Because you went to sleep on the trip. On the way from there to here, you went to sleep and forget everything. So I'm doing the translation for you. Because I didn't sleep in the meantime. That's why I got so old. Now, and then we start to talk about the one thing that is most important in your mind, philosophy. I said, but you say you can't talk about philosophy. The Greeks ain't come yet. And if the Greeks are not here, we can't talk about philosophy. Madison didn't get born yet. He said, son, I don't know about this. I tell you, but it is an author. I don't know them. <laughs> they, they're not here yet. You look into the future, son. And the future isn't the here. Deal with reality. <laughs> You're doing the same nice thing like you talking about going to heaven. Heavenly here yet. Let's deal with terra firma. Or, you know. He says that's it. So I said, now tell me something about philosophy. He said, since you're supposed to know, and Pharisee ain't here yet. The prophet is in here yet. Oh, you, you know that. Uh, 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 Aristotle isn't here. Plato isn't here. How are you going to talk some down and some about philosophy? They got to come here before you can talk about it. So he says, Keep quiet, son. Let me tell you. He says, salvation. I says, salvation? Salvation? You don't know salvation, Amy? He says, no. He says, salvation. He says, salvation is the fundamental principle of deification. So, he says, listen to it, son. Salvation is the fundamental principle of deification. I said, you mean I don't be God? He says, son, that's the whole theory. Who do you think made God? Come, let me show you. And God was the Word. I said, are you reading out of the five books of Moses? He said, who? Who is he? Yeah. <laughs> I said, are you reading out of the Quran? The one as interpreted by Ali from, Yosef Ali from Pakistan? He said, Yosef Ali. You know Ali the world, yes. <laughs> and I, you see, because I got to make sure. 
This man talking about salvation and Ali is here for the Quran. I mean, all the Quran they had, when they kill all the people who had the different ones and decided they're going to come up one, one alone and burn up Allah and, and decided on one. I said, uh, you mean the New Testament isn't here? So that uh, we could go to the 19th uh, uh, conference of bishops and uh, kill off Bishop Athanasius because he don't believe in, 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 in immaculate conception of virgin birth? Is it, no, 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 no. So we could go to the Council of Jamia, but then Jews are going to make a book called Genesis because they had four and they start talking about Egypt, leaving Egypt and they ain't getting the world yet, so they had to add one. I said, no, no, no. He said, boy, we don't, we stay yet, sir. So I said, well, I'll tell me some more. He said, you see, the word was God. And God was the word. Blessed be the word. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> God is God, man. God is Allah. God is Jesus. God is Jehovah. He says, son, I don't want none of those things. God is right. I said, who? He said, son, did you see the sun that coming up there? I said, yeah, yeah. He says, that's the symbol of God, son. Without that, you don't live. Without that, you have no night and no day. Without that, you don't see the moon. You don't see the stars. I said, what? Without that, there's no chlorophyll, son. I said, you, you're a genius, sir. You, 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 you must be a prophet. He said, no, son, we don't deal with prophecy. I am a mathematician. We deal with calculation. That's how we can tell things. We don't dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do dream when we work too much, ate too much, have too much sex or something, and we go to sleep, we dream. We snore too. <laughs> I said, sir, you mean to tell me? No wonder they call our, our educational system the mysteries. He said, sir, I'm, how old are you, sir? I said, well, I'm only seven. He said, I am going to induct you into the mystery system. So, I can't can tell you, no, it's too much for you. He said, take your clothes off. I said, to induct me in the mystery system? <laughs> I said to you, wait, you a it? <laughs> and he said, no, son, take your clothes off. Drop it. Trust me. And then I said, with this big knife, I said, we don't do it back. I'm only seven years old, seven years old, but I get erection. <laughs> and then he come in very close to my defender. <laughs> he said, but the thing was just like when I take a woman, thing in a woman's ear, I drill in a hole. I am going to massage it. I said, what? I got to massage it and it wouldn't hurt. He massaged it, two fellas hold of me and cut it. He said, son, you see that foreskin? It will go back, son. And that is to stop different microbes from hanging out underneath there. And that, you must have that. You must be clean to go, you know, the Jews ain't come yet. No circumcision yet. Abraham ain't get circumcised yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you going to get circumcised? And, and then he said, son, now you're ready for study. I said, just that. He said, now you're clean, but you got to take a bath. He said, and every day before you eat, before you put anything inside in your body, you must have a clean outside. You must bathe outside to the, and clean that in order to put things inside. Because we, you may take the dirty thing from outside and put it inside and get call yourself to up chuck. Yeah. But you should be chucking behind you, be chucking up, up at the top. So I said, is that all? He said, now you're going to study, sir. I said, but the Greeks ain't here yet. He says, no, 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 this is the rotunda. And you see what happened? He says, in that rotunda, what we call the hypostyle hall, you're going to be there with the other priest. The priest he says, that's the high stage of your education, sir. I said, well, th what about this deification? Continue, I like that. He says, that means that one day, when you pass out of this life, I said, I'm going to die? And yes, son. Everything goes to the stage. It's the highest stage you go to. You go to the stage for the twat. I said, the twat? The twat is the woman's vagina. He said, no. They call it the twat. Symbolic, the twat is the little uh, uh, passageway from this world into the nether world. It's called the twat. And we symbolize that by the arm of uh, Aset, which the Greeks are going to later call Isis. And it's that distance from this world we're in to the under to the nether world. He says, is the twat son. And the woman, people deal with it because of the fact that the, the shape of the woman's reproductive organs, along the fallopian too, has the same shape 
and it carries one thing from one department to the other, and thus they call that equality the part. I said, well, what you know, we, we've been using name in this time, and using it all wrong. He said, son, it's just like the stupid men you got in your country call, calling nut, that you go to kick him in his nut. He said, that a nut is a woman. We call nut N-U-T. And it is a woman, it's one of the goddesses. She's the goddess, in, the goddess in charge of the sky. She's the mother of heaven. I said, what? So then you mean to tell me that we're so stupid under European training that we don't know nut is a woman? He says, so there's a lot of things you don't know. There's something going wrong, we've been up there behind. They think they're women. So, <laughs> now, so I said, go ahead, talk, man, because this education get good to me. Remember, there's no Greece yet for me to learn any of this. Yet. We, we, we do not colonize them yet because they don't exist. Adam and Eve don't exist. We can't even tell them that happened. Because Eve would have known it was nothing she did wrong for going to the tree, let the snake play with her since she had a jackass sitting down there with a hard arm not doing nothing. <laughs> See, if she had come and taken the lesson, she would have known there was nothing wrong about having sex and not being married. People don't get pregnant for a uh, marriage certificate. No, that thing give you brother's license to go around coming in the sisters and don't marry them. Marriage it got nothing to do with heaven. Marriage got something to do with security to your woman and the children. Gives them a sense of uh, simple security that in the event you go up there and crook, she got something to hold a prima facie evidence to show the court that that jackass was my husband. <laughs> and I'm in at least as bit as cast it, uh, 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 You know, I'll bury the sucker and get the few dollars that he left in the bank. <laughs> that, that, those that didn't use in alcohol and drugs. See, no, no, sister, you understand, just people with marriage is mean, what God put to, uh, together, let no man put asunder. If God is a poor fool, he put something to, together, how am I going to put it asunder? And if God is driving. No, no, you see that, this your, answer, your ancestors speaking to you through me. Well, why not? If you could listen to some suckers telling you they were inspired scribes of God, I ain't inspired by God, I ain't talking about God. I ain't gonna put that lie in God at God. <laughs> Why should I lie in God? God must have been the old lady lying down having a good time. Why should I lie in the man? Now, and his old lady is goddess. All right. So I am there listening to the scribes still, you know, and now I'm in the mystery system. I'm going around. I, I am in the mystery system. I am studying masonry. I'm not free to be a Freemason yet. Because I'm not walking in the street with no top hat. I'm not going to any kind of thing with a big top hat, looking like a penguin, a black penguin, with a big coat, long coat, ass tail, hanging up in the sand, and all this thing, calling myself secret society. <laughs> but I'm setting down the basic values that others are going to come and adopt. That black folks are going to adopt from Europeans in Scotland talking about going up the Scottish side. With the 33 degrees, 11 of them for Jesus Christ, what they call the ethical rights. And the York rights, all of that junk. Give us back the first 22, and you ain't got a damn thing left. Now let's go on now. That's all I'm going to talk about you, so get yourself free. Now, I am still there studying. I have, I'm still at Saqqara. We're not going to leave Saqqara and go to Waset which they, now the Greeks came after the conquerors were gonna eventually teach that jackass they're gonna come to the world when we should let the sucker die in the mountain, uh, in the cave, he comes to the world and he's gonna conquer us. That's the one thing, we're gonna bring another bunch of foreigners to dinner and they're gonna eat up the host and the hostess. And so I'm gonna move to Waset, which they call Thebes, and which the present Arab changed to Luxor. And there I'm going to set up a temple. My name is going to be Amenhotep III. And I'm going to set up this big system, education system there. Remind you again, I am in the 18th dynasty. There is no Greece yet. 
I am the husband uh, of Queen Tai. And you got no doubt when you look at her, who she was. I am the man who the Greeks gonna come later. And believe that I am one of the great generals. And thus, when they come and see my two colossal statues at the West Bank of Waset, they're gonna call me all kinds of names from Agamemnon all the way down. And yet they won't alive, they won't in history yet. I set up there, this lodge, later in the 19th dynasty. One of my descendants, Ramesses II, he's going to come. This is the one that the Jews eventually going to lie and said that he chased them out of Egypt. And there's no record of them being chased out of anywhere, not at that time in history. And I was set, set up this grand lodge there. That is long before the Arabs are going to come and on my temple, use my temple foundation as a foundation and build a mosque on my temple. Abu Haggad is going to come, disrespect my temple and put his damn mask on top of my temple. Mm. Let me do that today. Let me build a mosque. Let me build one of my temple and the foundation of a mask, and some of you in here will be damn mad, but you are not mad that an Arab comes and build his mask and your temple. Peace out. Peace out. Even though they said that Mohammed's grandmother, maternal grandmother, came from Ethiopia. They didn't remember that. When we give them a religion even give them a black stone from Ethiopia to call the Kahba. You see? He, those who don't know me call you hey. Hey there. They don't know me. They don't know my name. My name is al -Kabala. My name is Originator. My name is Creator. My name is Kunum. I make men and my father's wheel right. out of clay long before God Jehovah copied the pattern and made Adam out of clay but forgot to do it without the father's wheel. I have the proof of what I did. I could carry you to my temple. My temple is still in Esna, in Upper Egypt. You can see me doing it on the walls. My scribe put it down there for time, dug in the stones. And I carry, my son carry people to see it, to witness it. All these things I am saying, my son carry people to see it and bring other people to bring people to see it to witness what we have done. Where? Where is the recording by Adam, by Eve, by Noah? Rather than the thoughts of some Hebrew scribe by the Sanhedrin around 700 BC. Way, way late, son. These are little children. I had already gone on to my ank to get my ank in another world thousands of years before some little fools called Jews came around to distort my 42, 147 admonitions of Goddess Mahat and took out 10 of them and called them 10 commandments. Son, I will carry you in the tomb of Ramses VI in the valley of the king and show you all of the 147 admonitions to Mahat and the wall there. See them there? And Moses isn't born yet in the city of Goshen. Up the river there. I said, down the river there in Egypt. The first Jew, Abraham, isn't born in Chaldea yet. I can let you already spoken about a one and only true Godson. I can let him, his name. The son of Amenhotep, the first I just third I just spoke to you. Queen Tai is his mother. We call him Amenhotep the fourth. 
He changed his name to Atom, Akhenaten. The sun is beautiful, God is beautiful. He said, there is only one God, son. We have been saying it is only one God, but we said it is Ra. And all the different names are just qualities of Ra. We drew a picture, a sketch. We call it the diagram of the law of others to explain it, son. But since Akhenaten wanted to be clearer, let him go ahead. Akhenaten said, we only don't use one name. We will use the name Atten. And we will take the same sun, the symbol that our ancestors were using with Amun. And we will take the rays and put thumbs at the end of the rays. And we will call it the Atten. And so we will pray to Atten. And when Moses is born, we will tell him about it. Poor fellow, when he comes, he needs to know this. We know he's going to be a traitor, but it's all right. We all got one in our mix. Soil in Washington is not the only trader we got, son. We got many more. And so we said to Akhenaten, Akhenaten, don't marry that girl from Asia, Nepotetic. Don't marry her. She came from Matani. They, their sister's here. Marry one of them, you see. It ain't now we've been doing this. We have thought. It seems as if we wouldn't listen. I told that boy, I can listen, not to do this. Don't let that God thing get to his head. It did get to his head, but not the one up here. It got to the middle head. <laughs> and said to me, he was trying to explain the thing the wrong way. And I tell Akhenaten, why are you going to take your cousin and put him on the throne with you, Simon Carey, to stop and talk about getting rid of the army, but non-violence. The world isn't like that now. You got some crackers already in the world. You got some Asians already in the world. It's not us alone in the world. These people aren't civilized yet. They're going to destroy what we build. They're going to try to destroy our, our pyramids. They're going to come and take stones from the pyramids and build homes for the rich ones and build silk mosques for themselves from the stones of our pyramids. Hmm. I had to, I had to listen to the, the Arabic talk. And the Arabic said, Son, I saw in the future a people coming out of the nowhere. A people call, they, we don't call them Greeks. They're way off here. You see, son, we, we, we are still here in the 18th dynasty. They're not going to come into being when they see the Ethiopians are right, oh, the Ethiopians in charge, Pianchi, and all of them, they're coming down the Nile. They're going to take over because we're not doing right. They said that even the gods we are despoiling, the gods that came from Puanit, came from around Kenya, Uganda, uh, Northern Tanganyika. You know, boy, we used to call all of that in ancient times, we call that Puanit. We didn't call it these funny names. The mountain of the moon, sun, used to be where we came because the gods like to be there. And it's all papyrus, all paper. The papyrus of Funefa said, we came from the beginning of the Nile, Uganda and Ethiopia, at the first hills of the mountain of the moon. He said, son, you know, geographically, you know what that is? He said, son, you know, son, we, we, we were alone in a sense. We didn't know that other people would come. We don't know where they will come. Some place called the Caucasus Mountains, between a place called Asia and Europe, some place like that. There would be other people coming. We try to forestall it, but you know nature. Nature goes out of control sometimes, and we would have liked to stop those bastards before they ever come on the scene. We know they're going to have trouble. We can see, I can see in the future, those bastards, those ice people coming, and because of that ice, they're going to cause a lot of trouble. But I can't stop the sun. We appeal to the word, but the word didn't tell us. We didn't read it from the word. You see, son, I got a boy alone, bring it down, bro. I ain't get to Europe yet. You see, I haven't, did I say anything about Greece? I just said, they're gonna come. Did I say anything about Rome? I just tell you, they're gonna come. Did I say anything about China? It's gonna come. 
Did I say about India? And I can't talk about India because my, I didn't send up the Dravidians yet. Sister Stis didn't go there yet. We didn't carry the worship of Goddess Hathor, Heru, yet. To start the worship of the, the symbol of the sacred cow, <coughs> Goddess Hathor. She is still on the temple. She's still at the temple down at Dendera. The temple of Goddess Heru, where you see thousands of heads of the sacred cow and the and the capitals of the columns. You see? Son. Ginova will come one day. And you will argue with him, argue and argue for years with him. He has to come because you can't go and show enough people as he could do in one day. You have to get Gildover to go with you one day, fight him, call up his wife, let both of you tear him down, call Jeffries. Bother him, don't let him eat, go in the toilet, everywhere you can find him, and make him feel bad that he doesn't come. Kidnap him one day and carry him so that more people can see who don't go physically may see it. May see the glory as spectacular as it may look on the TV is nothing as he said. It took him a good hour before he could compose himself to take the picture. He got there and saw the double temples at Abu Simbel of Ramesses the, the second and his most favorite wife, Nefertara, not to be mixed up with Nefertiti. And the colossal that hid him for a while, he forgot to tell Reverend Brown to take the pictures. He didn't speak because he was speechless. He says, I couldn't believe I was looking at what African man did. It was too much for one person to be whole. That, day, that moment, all of what I've been taught that I can't learn, I realized what the cracker had done to me. How I can't learn that my father didn't even build this. They didn't take stone by stone. No, they cut into this mountain as they had done in the statue of Pharaoh Capra. When they cut out a statue of man's head and the lion's body and call it God Raherukata, later Hamarchus, which the Greeks came and called the Sphinx of Giza. They went in there and built these two temples by digging it out. Went in, as they now do later in Ethiopia, when they dig out the wall, the cathedral, and down into the earth at a place called Lanibala. The genius of the African, in one swoop, went over. When the African was already in his decline in Egypt, when the Africans had already become corrupted in his self-aggrandizement, when he no longer listened to the word, the word had stopped being his God. He moved from there and carried his God beyond himself. He no longer saw that his God himself, man, the birds, the trees, the earth, the moon, the sun, all were one. When he started to talk about he is higher than another animal, when he stopped understanding the totality of all things, with all the different fingers 
he failed to understand that all the fingers are on one hand. And all the other five fingers are on one hand. And the two hands are on one body. When he starts to compartmentalize that this is different to that one. And this one is different, look how distant from here to here. This got to be different to this one. Forgetting the place that connected the two. He thought that this was separate from this. Forgetting here. That it's connected to here too. So the philosophical concept that Garvey came, Marcus Messiah Garvey, who is a national hero of a country that don't teach anything about the national hero. Not a, cl a classroom in the country got one book dealing with the national hero. <laughs> and they are independent. <laughs> they are independent. Out of many come one, they said. Right. Don't worry, son. H. Sylvester Williams, George Padmore, Cyril L. R. James would come from Trinidad. And they would come to New York City to a man called W. E. B. Du Bois, William Eggard Borgward Du Bois. And they would offer him a new concept of Pan-Africanism, but he, with his Pan-Negroism <laughs> and his 10% with the monocles and the four letters, Greek of course, would reject them. And Pan-Africanism would be a thing run primarily by from Jews teaching at NYU, the Baskis and others. And they will go to the London School of Economics. And they will have their conferences, themselves and Europeans, and they will travel in merchant ships where African people have to go to the third deck below, can't go anywhere else, and Pan American won't take them yet. They didn't take black people and the goose, the flying duck. You see, son, what would happen is the Church of Rome would forget its black Madonna and child. The Church of Rome would join with the Portuguese and the Spaniards and enslave your brothers and sisters from 1482 and in 1506 they will move the slave colony to the so-called New World, to a place they call Hispaniola, which others will call Haiti and Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. And soon there will come a time when those brothers and sisters of yours will be dying off the shores of Miami and you'll be crying for the Vietnamese boat people, but you will not cry for your own boat people. Because you see what happened? You're going to believe that the slave boats came directly from Africa to Jamestown, Virginia. You didn't realize that they stood 110 years in the Caribbean before they came to Virginia. You would tell that was going to happen. You see, son, you would have a short memory. You would come there, son, and you will identify with your master, believe in. You will be going to all his wars. You will even fight for his, his war of liberation from his own brother. And one of you will fight on one side for the Englishman, and one of you will fight on the other side for the Englishman's daughter, slut's daughter, son. And they will call it civil war. And some of you will be taken to Nova Scotia. Some of you can realize you can't stop the cold and let him carry to England and then can't stand it there and you will go to Ceylon. And some of you would wind up in a place called Liberia. You will go back home and kill the people there, your own people, and call them the natives. And you become the Monroeville talking about America is your motherland. Some you will disintegrate. 
you would miss salvation. All because you believe that being a mayor, you believe that being a congressman, a senator, a judge of the Supreme Court in your master's land, make you your master. Make you a master. And then you will commit the unforgivable sin. You will sleep with a master's daughter. You will take all the funky diseases and you will pass it to your mother and your sister and your woman at home. And you will wind up with AIDS. Go on, please, Doc. You see, son? Those things look glamorous. Having a boat in the basin is glamorous. Having a, having a, a Audi 5000 or a Mercedes SK, SK25 in a condominium up in the hill, looking over nowhere. <laughs> Going up to the mountain top and seeing on the other side where you get your ass blown crazy off the mountain top. <laughs> and another brother who fights for you will get killed, but you, you're not gonna send a penny to his widow to support his Six dead children, little girls, two of whom, when he get killed, was still in the mother's womb. He didn't even know he had them because she was making him a surprise at his birthday to tell him, I am pregnant again. <laughs> but there will be all kinds of things on his, the memory of his death, raising funds, but his daughter's not getting a dime. Son, some would say that this has been, this is God, it's in the prophecy, that's that nonsense. If the future is already made, then sit in your ass and do nothing. You don't need to do anything. If it is prophesied and it's going to happen, it's in the card. What the hell are you doing? Sit down there and let it happen. It's happening because you did nothing about it. It's a lame excuse to say it's all in God's plan. Then where is God's plan? Pull it out, show me the document, so I could know tomorrow what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Son, until another time I can't reveal all they have, I have revealed to you. Frankly, son, there's nothing in the future. There's nothing new to reveal to you. This is all gone. It's God, yesterday's food. You have had this food before. You have regurgitated it, but we have to eat it again. Because obviously, the substance did not remain with you. The only thing you have is the hucks. But since you didn't get out all the substance, I am going to make you eat it again, and again, and again. You will have to be like the cow that brought, bring it down any such animal with a cud and bring it back up and carry it back down and bring it back up a number of times until all the substance stay in you. So son, be your sisters and your brothers. Tell them, tell your sisters that they have to talk to your brothers. Tell your sisters the reason black men don't treat black women good is because black women didn't teach black men. When they were little boys at their breasts. Tell your sisters to stop using bottles. Breasts were made for baby's mouth. Daddy can't have it all. God, <laughs> No, that don't mean I'm going to give up my life. just have to share it. <laughs> <laughs> but sister, when you get that little brother, your man ain't treating you right. 
Take his child when you got it at the breast. I'm brainwashed that child about how to treat the African woman. About how to recognize the African woman when you go to college, when you win money, to know that she is the next wife. Make him understand it is his obligation. It is obligation from God and the goddess, all the deities that he marry an African woman. That he spend his money with an African woman. That he's the product. Let him understand that whether he call himself Muslim, whether they call himself Christian, whether he call himself Hebrew or Yoruba, he is still an African. And Africa comes 